Hey guys, it's Alyssa Marie here. Welcome back to my channel. For today, I wanted to do a slightly more chatty video and talk about everything that you need to know before you big chop. Having big chopped back in December 2017, I know that it is more than just oh, I'm gonna cut my hair tomorrow and that's fine. Like, at least for me, like there was a lot of preparation, pre-planning, a lot of thinking and researching that I had to do that led up to my actual big chop. So I just wanted to talk all about how I prepared for my big chop so that if you are considering a big chop, then you kind of know the steps to take. So let's get on into it. Okay, so super, super quick background story on how I decided to go natural. My natural hair journey did not start out with the intention of actually going natural. I kind of was just like, oh, let's see how long I could go without a relaxer. One thing led to another and I ended up deciding to just transition to natural hair. So obviously you don't have to big chop. A lot of people actually set out time, maybe about a year, two years, to just transition their hair, which means they're just letting their natural hair grow out with their relaxed ends still intact, relaxed or damaged ends still intact. So that's what I decided I wanted to do. I did not want a big chop, didn't think that I could go through with that. But I lasted five months before I completely was just absolutely fed up of the two different textures. It's difficult to deal with and my patience had run out and that's when I started to consider doing a big chop. So one of the first things I did once I started to consider a big chop was speaking with my hairdresser. So I was with a Diva Curl certified hairstylist and she did all of my trims and stuff while I was transitioning and so I went to her and I told her that I was considering a big chop. And honestly, when I went in, I was thinking like, oh, she's gonna say I'm crazy. It's only been five months and I don't have enough growth. You know, I honestly, I thought she was gonna warn me against it. And if she had done that, I would have been like, yeah, dumb idea, just stick out with transitioning. But to my surprise, she said, Alyssa, that's awesome, let's do this. And I was like, huh? I explained to her like I didn't want to look crazy, didn't want to look like a boy and I was asking her all these kind of questions, does she think I have enough growth, like is this too short of a time for me to have transitioned to then big chop, like I asked her a ton of questions, told her all my concerns and she just kept reassuring me, she said Alyssa you have enough growth, you can do this, once you big chop your hair is going to grow a lot faster, you're going to be a lot more pleased with it, your curls will flourish. She was just so enthusiastic about it and ready to go. So hearing how enthusiastic and excited she was for me was like the first step like towards me fully committing to doing a big chop. So before I left the salon, we actually made a date and that was gonna be the big chop date. Although at that point in time, I was like, you know what? This is either gonna be a date for a trim or a big chop, but we'll find out on the day. So yeah, once the date was set, I spent the next few weeks doing pure research. And this is my second piece of advice for you all. I think doing your research is so helpful. I remember Googling things like, things to know before you big chop, why you should never big chop, why you should big chop, all of the above. And then not only did I research that kind of stuff, but I also went on Pinterest and Instagram and I looked up pictures of women who had done big chops. Doing all that research was majorly helpful for me. I think that's really what, honestly, like seeing all the other beautiful pictures of these women who were slaying their cuts and reading all these articles of people before and after their big chops and hearing their experience. Even on YouTube, there's so many other women out there who, which is like me, that's what I'm doing now, who kind of just tell their story and it makes you feel a little bit more comfortable to say, hey, if she can do it, I can do it. So the research not only helped me kind of understand what to prepare myself for, but also gave me an idea of what kind of cut I wanted because there's so many different things, you know, how long do you want your hair to look, what shape do you want it to look, you know, do you want the sides to be tapered, do you want it to be a more round look. There's so many different things, believe it or not, that can make your teeny weeny afro look a little bit different. So researching all of that was also very exciting. I ended up screenshotting maybe two or three pictures that I took with me on the day of the big chop so that we could recreate something similar. I ended up going for like a tapered, like slightly tapered, not too tapered because I wanted it to be easier to grow out, but like slightly tapered sides and a longer crown. I think that's what this is called. <laughs> All right, and then so once you've spoken to your hairdresser, you've got the date in mind, and you've done a little bit of research, this is when you gotta start 
talking to yourself internally. Like there's a huge mental aspect when it comes to big chopping. So the first thing that I had to continue telling myself every day was that it's hair. Hair grows, it grows back and it'll be absolutely fine. This is not an end all be all. It might take a little bit of time to grow back, but it's going to grow back and you will be absolutely fine. So that was one thing that internally, you know, I said, like, what's the big deal? Let me just chop, I'll be so much happier. I can't even begin to explain how frustrated I was with my hair while I was transitioning. Like it came to a point where I was wearing a bun every single day. And if I was wearing a bun every day, I was like, there's no, like my hair is, like I'm pulling my hair back every single day, I might as well just chop it off. And another thing I had to speak to myself about internally was the reason why I was doing this big chop. And I think this is one of the major, major things that you have to settle with within yourself. You have to know and believe in your reason for big chopping. I cannot tell you how important it is to make sure that the reason that you want a big chop is for you. You cannot big chop for your mom you can't big chop for your favorite YouTuber. You can't big chop for anybody else but yourself. You have to be sure that this is something that you want for you. The third thing that you should also mentally prepare for is the length of the journey. Now, like I said, hair does grow back, but it does take time. And everybody's hair grows differently at different rates in different ways. Everyone's journey is so different. So it's important not to compare yourself to other people's journey. Just be secure and happy within your own journey and just prepare yourself that it's gonna take some time, but promise yourself that you'll enjoy the time on your journey. And once you feel mentally strong, you're ready. All right, so at this point, you've got your date set, you spoke to your hairdresser, You've got little screenshots of your hairspiration that you wanna show your hairdresser. You've read articles so you know what to prepare yourself for and you have mentally prepared yourself. At this point, there is one more thing that you need to do and that is to take a trip to your local hair store. So this is the last thing I did right before I big chopped. This is exactly a week before I big chopped. I went on Saturday, went to my local hair store and I picked up a few things and boy am I glad that I did. So there are four main things that I suggest that you pick up from your hair store. I think these four things are actually very necessary and I'm so glad that I had some other natural hair sisters who actually suggested that I got these things beforehand because it helped me a lot when I woke up the day after my big shop, like, oh my gosh, what do I do? <laughs> All right, so the four things that you absolutely need before you big chop are a spray bottle, so you can use that. You can mix some water, some conditioner, a little bit of oil to refresh your curls every day. Then you'll need an oil, a leave-in conditioner, and a gel. This is what you're gonna use every day to style your hair. When your hair is super short, there's not too much that you can do to it, but you still want the curls to look healthy. You want them to look, you know, slick and defined. These are the things that you're gonna need in order to achieve that result. So in terms of the products, I would suggest that you stick with more natural hair brands. So a few brands that come to mind, I love Camille Rose, Curls is a great brand. So those would be the two brands that I actually fully started out with, so I would highly recommend their products for when you're first starting out. But yeah guys, those are my top tips in preparing for a big chop. If you are you know, gearing up for your big chop, I wish you the best. You are gonna be absolutely beautiful. Please enjoy every single minute of your journey, including the big chop prep that you're probably going through right now. So yeah guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any other questions, please comment below and I will do my best to answer all of them. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe so you can keep up with me and my natural hair journey. I'll catch you guys in my next video. Bye.